In order to obtain formulas for the derivatives of trig functions, we are going to start with a limit as x is approaching 0 of sine x over x. The reason one we, why we care about this limit is because if you look at the function sine x and try to calculate the derivative, let's say for instance at 0, then by definition this derivative at 0 is a limit as h approaches 0 of sine of 0 plus h minus sine of 0 over h. As sine of 0 is 0, it is a limit at 0 of sine h over h. And therefore to obtain the derivative at 0 we would need to know something about the limit at 0 of sine x over x. So we're going to use a geometric argument to obtain this limit. For technical reasons, we are going to restrict ourselves for this argument to the case of the limit from the right, so we can assume that the measure of the angle is positive. So in the plane, I'm going to consider the unit circle. So because it's a circle of radius 1, the point of intersection of that circle with the x-axis as coordinate 1, 0. I take an angle of measure x radian and the point of intersection of the half ray defining this angle with the unit circle as coordinates cosine of x and sine x. In particular, the projection of that point on the x axis as coordinate cosine x and 0. The tangent to the unit circle at the point A is perpendicular to the radius OA and intersect the half ray defining the angle at a point that I call T and that has coordinate 1 tangent of x. Its x coordinate is 1 because it has obviously the same x coordinate as the point A. As for its second coordinate, if you consider in the right triangle OTA the tangent of x, it is the opposite side, which is the length AT that we're looking for, divided by the adjacent side, which is the radius OA that has length 1. So we obtain that tangent x is this length AT over 1, in other words, AT is tangent x. OK, now we're going to calculate various areas. Starting with this triangle OBA. Well, you know that the area of a triangle can be calculated, for instance, by taking one half of base times height. Here, a base for that, that triangle would be OA, which is a radius of the unit circle, and therefore has length 1. A height would be the length bh and this length is sine x because the point b has coordinate cosine x sine x so this length here is sine x so one half base times height is therefore one half one times sine x so we get sine x over two let's look now at a larger area the area of the angular sector O B A. So to calculate this area we need to know how to calculate the area of an angular sector in general. But this is fairly straightforward. If you have a circle and you look at a central angular sector of um, radian measure theta and the circle has radius r, then you see that in particular is a measure of and the angular sector is 2 pi, in other words, a full revolution, then the area of the angular sector is, of course, the surface area of the full disk, in other words, pi r square. That means that for an um, angular sector of measure 1 radian, the area, the area would be 2 pi times less, in other words, 1 half of r square, and therefore, if the angular measure is 
theta radian, then the area of the angular sector is one half r squared times theta. Here we're in the case where r is one because we're on the unit circle. And the measure of the angular sector in radian is x. Therefore, we obtain one half times x. Finally, we are going to calculate the larger area of this green triangle OTA. This is a right triangle at A, and therefore a base could be the radius OA, which has length 1, a height, the length AT, which as we have seen is tangent x. So 1 half base times height would be 1 half of tangent x. Therefore, what we have obtained? So we have obtained that sine x over 2, which is the area of the blue triangle, is less than x over 2, which is the area we have calculated for the red angular sector, which is less than tangent x over 2, which is the area we have calculated for the larger green triangle. If we multiply every term by 2 over sine x, we multiply by a positive number because we are looking at the limit as x is approaching 0 from the right. So x is a positive angle, which is small, so that sine x is a positive number. Therefore, we preserve the direction of the inequalities and we obtain that x over sine x is between 1 and 1 over cosine x. Taking the reciprocals is going to reverse the direction of the inequalities and we obtain that sine x over x is between cosine x and 1. But as x is approaching 0, cosine x is approaching 1. Therefore, sine x over x is between a function going to 1 and the constant function 1. And therefore, by the squeeze theorem, the limit as x is approaching 0 from the right of sine x over x is 1. With a similar argument, we could show that the limit from the left is also 1. All it would take is to repeat this argument using the lower half of the um, unit circle rather than the upper half. As a consequence, a limit at 0 of sine x over x exists and is equal to 1. This particular limit can be used to calculate other limits. For instance, if we want to calculate the limit at 0 of sine of 5x divided by sine of 3x. To use the limit we have, we would like to have sine of an angle divided by the same angle. This is not quite, quite what we have, but when we have, for instance, sine of 5x, we could divide by 5x to have this type of expression, sine of an angle divided by the same angle as this angle approaches 0. If we do that, we will have to correct what we did. So I would get sine of 5x divided by 5x, but then I have to multiply by 5x at the top. On the other end, this sine of 3x, I can multiply by 3x at the top and divide by 3x to correct what I did. That way, I obtain an expression that matches sine x over x as x goes to 0 for this term. And here I have the reciprocal of a similar expression. I have sine of 3x over 3x, but the reciprocal of this expression. Because sine of 3x over 3x would go to 1 as x goes to 0, its reciprocal goes to 1 over 1, and therefore as a limit. As a result, each one of the three terms in this product as a limit as x approaches 0, and therefore we can use the fact that, provided all limits exist, limit of a product is the product of the limits, and we obtain the product of the limits, with the first term having limit 1, the second one being the constant 5 third, and the third one going to the reciprocal of 1, in other words, 1. Therefore the product equals 5 third which is the limit of sine of 5x divided by sine of 3x as x approaches 0.
Let's look at another example. Let's say we want to calculate the limit at 0 of cosine x minus 1 divided by x. This is an indeterminate form because cosine x at 0 approaches 1, so the top goes to 0 and so does the bottom. To use the limit that we have established, this sine x over x, we will need to transform this cosine into a sine. One way to do that is to use the so-called double angle formula. Cosine of twice an angle is 2 cosine square of that angle minus 1, or 1 minus 2 sine square of that angle. In our case, we want to transform cosine x into something that involves a sine. So we're going to use the double angle formula replacing 2x by x and therefore x by x over 2. This way cosine x becomes 1 minus 2 sine square of the angle x over 2. We subtract 1 to this and you see that at the top we have 1 minus 1. They cancel out. So we end up with negative 2 sine square of x over 2 over x. I'm going to write that differently. The sine square, I'm going to write it as sine multiplied by itself and pull aside negative 2 sine of x over 2. At the bottom, I'm going to rewrite x as 2 times x over 2 in order to have the angle that is inside the sine function appear explicitly. So I didn't do anything here, just rewrite the expression that we have on the first line in a different way. You see that we have a 2 at the top and a 2 at the bottom that we can cancel out. And we obtain this expression. And I wrote that this is the product of the limit, because both terms in the product in the previous line have a limit sine of x over 2 when x goes to 0 approaches sine of 0 which is 0 and the other term has a limit because the limit of sine x over x at x at 0 approaches 1. Therefore we obtain the limit of sine x over 2 which is 0 multiplied by the limit of sine x over 2 over x over 2 at 0 which is 1 in other words, we obtain 0 for this limit. These two limits are particularly important and in the next video we are going to use them to establish formulas for the derivative of the sine function and the cosine function.